Halleluja. Amen. Halleluja. Halleluja. Amen. Are you ready to have a church? Amen. Yes. Good morning, family and friends. Welcome to Love Gospel Assembly. <clears throat> As you know, I am Elder Nisi Rojas. Listen. As we open up this morning's service, and before we pray, I do want to take, as I usually do, just a couple of moments to share something. But today I want to share about a practice that I have intentionally done for as long as I remember. And so I wanted to share with everyone, perhaps you do it as well, but I thought it was a good intentional discipline to pass along. Now this practice helps me keep focused on Christ and not only on myself or my own needs. I pray that after I share with you that it does the same for you as it's always done for me. I find that when I do this practice that it helps to elevate me to a special place of worship when I spend time with the Lord. Yeah. So what is it that I do, you ask? What is it that you do, Elder? What is this practice? What is this intentional practice you want to share with us this morning? Well, here it is. On several times a month, no particular days, it's not on my calendar, it's no particular day, but several times a month, I go and I spend time with the Lord. We all do. But this is what I do a few times a month that's a little different. When I go to him in his presence, I don't pray for my needs. I don't lay requests out to his feet. I don't even sit there in awe of how great he is. What I do intentionally several times a, week, a month is I go before the Lord. And I just sit down in front of him, Pastor Lillian. And I spend time just saying, thank you. Amen. Thank you. You say, oh, then what, what do you mean you don't leave your requests? What do you mean you don't offer your prayers? You mean you just take a lump of time and just say, Thank you. Yeah. Because I believe that he has heard all of my petitions Amen. prior to this moment. Amen. 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 I believe that he has gathered in front of him every tear I've ever cried. I believe that every prayer, every promise he's given me, he remembers it more than I do. Sure. And so when I go on these times of prayer, Pastor Jeff, it's, Usually not that easy all the time because my dogs are barking and the laundry just finished and the dishes might have, I still have done and maybe dinner didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to. And just life gets in your head. So I wanted to share this with you and let you know this is not easy to do because this is an intentional thing. You're intentionally going before the Lord and you're just thanking him. Yes, you can thank him for the things that he's done, but I spend so much more time just thanking him for who he is. Yes. So I wanted to leave that. I wanted to share that. What a liberating time when I'm with our Savior. Just saying thank you. How free I leave a room when I know I don't have to bring my burdens in that day because I'm just going to be with my father saying, thank you. So the other night, I went upstairs. My husband was the love of my life, Deacon Tony. I left him downstairs. I had gone upstairs. I was retiring early. I was a little under the weather last week, a little stomach thing. And so I went upstairs a little earlier. 
and I just sat on the edge of my bed, and I went to put on the TV, Pastor Lillian, to watch a, a prophetic word I wanted to hear that someone had given, and I just said, I, just, I put the remote down, this is the truth, and I just said, Lord, thank you. And I just sat on my bed, it was dark. I want to help you get to that point. What a liberating time just to go. And if he's never done anything for you, and I doubt there's anyone here that that's true about, just to be free of everything, and every need. So if you look at Elder Nisi and the pastors, your leaders, your friends, and you wonder what makes them so different, it's the time we spend with the Lord. And that time doesn't have to be marked by need or want or reminding the Lord. He doesn't need a reminder. Take time just to thank him. Just to thank him. Imagine how that must make him feel that we come not asking for gifts, but bearing our thanks. So I wanted to give you a minute. We're going to get ready to go into worship. I don't know about you, but I can't have church. <laughs> Let this worship be one of thanks. Like really, really thank him. Don't worry about the prayer requests. He's got them all. He's got them. It'll be okay. If you take a couple of minutes, a service, an hour or two, and just thank him. Break down his door today and worship just to thank him. Dance a dance of worship, of thanks and thanksgiving. Look at what the Bible says. Psalm seven seventeen. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise. To the name of the Lord, the Most High. Look at Psalm 9, verse 1, the earlier part, A. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. How about Psalm 69, 30? I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. And lastly, one that we all know, Psalm 118, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. So let that, that's what I wanted to share with my family this morning. Amen. Let today's worship, we're going to open up and pray in a minute. When you worship today, let it be a worship of thanks. Like I said, don't worry about the sicknesses and the illnesses. and They all have their place in the presence of God. Don't worry. He's got that. Let's take today, let's allow the worship leader, as the songs of the Lord, the Lord has given her, to just say thanks. Amen. Please stand to our feet. We'll open up for prayer. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, for your sacrifice on Calvary. We thank you, Lord God, for shedding your blood for us. We thank you, Lord God, for conquering sin on Calvary and raising yourself from the dead. And we thank you, Lord, that you sit in the right hand of your Father. You are alive. Yes. You are alive, Lord God, and we are alive because of you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us and all who you and for who you are. If you've given us nothing, you've given us you. We open this service, Lord God. We dedicate it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Minister Lizanne. And then we'll do the next one. God bless you. Let's begin with that note. Let's give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Amen. Amen. Give. Oh, 
David dance. We got to be like David. Sometimes we have to encourage ourselves. So today in worship, we encourage ourselves. Doesn't matter what we're facing. Doesn't matter what day comes in March or April, what lies ahead. Right now, when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will dance. How many of you are ready to dance? See? Praise.
spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God.
manifesting himself in this place right now, right here. He says, just call. Just call on me and I will come. I will manifest myself. You hear that, Wanda? You hear that, Wanda? You just call and he answers. He manifests himself. Se manifiesta en este lugar. Not just este lugar. He manifested, manifests himself in este lugar. He manifests himself in este lugar. He manifests himself in our minds, in our hearts, in the broken places, in the overwhelmed places. He's there. He's there. He's there. There's nothing ever to fear because he's with us. He says so much, be anxious for nothing. Fear not, fear not. You know the clave? You know the clue there? Because he's with us. It's not fear not because we could get it together, because the answer's right around the corner, or we're so smart, or we're so talented. Fear not because he's with us. Punto. He's with us. It's all him, all him. All day, all the time. And he's tangible. More tangible than this podium. We just have to be present because he's present.
Him, He will manifest Himself. If you seek Him, He will manifest Himself. If you worship, He will manifest Himself. If you call Him, He will manifest Himself. If you seek Him, He will manifest Himself. If you worship, He will manifest Himself. If you call Him, say we're in the Bronx. Someone will say we're in the concourse. Some will say we're in this church. I say 
we're in his hands. My sons are in his hands. My husband in his hands. My daughter and grandgirls in his hands. And all of you, my family, are, we're together in this. We are in his hands. There's no better place. Like the words of my granddaughter, it can't get better than this. Encuentro en ti, alegre estoy, todo temor, tú lo limpiarás. En tu presencia, mis ganancias no brillan más, cada corona a ti la reina. En tu presencia, tiembla el cielo a ver tu grandeza. Reinas y reyes se asombran de ti.
is in every way wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Mass is in every way wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Mass is in every way wonderful, beautiful. the times where you don't even have a clue what the answer is going to be or how things going to turn out. He is awesome in our saddest place. He is awesome in the deepest part of the battle. He is awesome in the beginning of the battle, the middle of the battle, the end of the battle. He's awesome before he parted the Red Sea. He's awesome while we're walking through the Red Sea. And he's awesome after we leave the Red Sea. Amen. Let's sing this one more time. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, our Father. Ah. Uh -huh. 
I'm not going to share what the Lord put in my heart just now to share with Minister Lizanne. She can share if she like. But I've asked her to come back up to sing here in your presence. Now listen to me. Remember how we opened up thanking the Lord. If you have a healing that you've been praying for, if you have a prayer request that you really have been praying for, a promise that you're holding on to, I want you to come up to the front. And we're going to sing here in his presence again. And for those of us who have a prayer request, who have that promise, who have that healing, who have that financial blessing, who have that need, we're going to not only sing in his presence, but for those people, I want you to begin to thank God for what he's already given you. So if you're ill, thank him that you're here today. If you have a promise here in his presence, if you have a promise that you're waiting on, thank him for all the promises you can grab today. If you have a family member that you've been praying for, a son, a wife, children, in his presence, I don't want you to lift up those needs. I want you to thank God for the needs he's already met. Let's usher in his Holy Spirit by us just thanking him for the miracles he's already done. So we're going to sing in his presence one more time. And in his presence, I encourage you. I encourage you. I, my heart to your heart. Because you see, when you thank God for what he's already given you, something happens with the hands of God. They open wide. Open wide to give us more because we're grateful because we're thankful because we're grateful for the little that he's given us so when you pray for finances thank God for the clothes on your back when you're praying for a new job thank God for the food for the oatmeal that you have in your house when you're standing on the promises of God remember all the promises he's already kept his word to that's how we're going to shape our prayer request today. Just thank him. Release thanks and watch what he releases back to you. Because he loves you. And he wants to be thanked. 
He wants to be remembered for all that He's done for us. So let's take the beginning of the opening of this service, thanking God, and let's bring it to a whole new level. Remember, we're not praying for the healing we're waiting for. We're not praying for the brokenness in our families. We're going to thank God for the families that we've got. We're going to thank God for the crazy children that we're praying for, that we have, that are alive and in our lives. We're going to thank God for the good leg we have. Forget about the bad one. He knows about that. That's what we're going to do in his presence as Minister Lazan leads us. Allow God to break through, and he will, in Jesus' name. Encuentro en ti, alegre estoy, todo temor, tú lo limpiarás. En tu presencia, mis ganancias no brillan más, cada corona a ti la rendí. Y en tu presencia tiembla el cielo a ver tu grandeza. Reinas y reyes se asombran de ti. Y en tu presencia no consume. En tu presencia, el cielo y la tierra uno son. Y en tu presencia, renuevas todo. Y en tu presencia, todo se postra ante ti. Found in your hands, fullness of joy. Every fear suddenly wiped away. Here in your presence, all of my gains now fade away. Every crown no longer on display. Here in your presence. Heaven is traveling in all of your wonders. Kings and their kingdoms are standing on me. Here in your presence, we are undone. Here in your presence, heaven and earth become one. Your presence, 
here in my in your presence no words are needed here in your presence you hear the whispers from my heart here in your presence i find my peace i find my joy i find my hope in tu presencia in tu presencia hay paz hay gozo hay sanidad en tu presencia en tu presencia hay esperanza hay esperanza hay esperanza in your presence there's hope in your presence there's peace in your presence there's all that i need i need nothing but you only you only you all i need is you in the morning and you have no words no words cuando tu corazón ni tiene palabra tu corazón entona oh 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 To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. Para adorarte 
adorarte vivo para adorarte adorarte Dios vivo para adorarte vivo para adorarte adorarte Dios y mi corazón entona oh, oh, oh. Not you, Minister Lazan. <laughs> Thank you, Minister Lazan. Thank you. So you came up to thank the Lord. You came up to be in His presence. You came up for thank to thank Him for what you have. And if you never get anything else, any of us ever again. We have everything. So now, especially these people in the front, everybody can join it. Everybody can join it. We're one more big fan, but especially you folks. Close your eyes and breathe in Jesus. And when you're breathing in Jesus, breathe in the assurance that every prayer you wore before Him sits before Him day and night. 24 hours a day until his perfect timing. Breathe in that every promise he's given your family, he's gonna keep it because he's not a man that he should ever lie. Breathe in Jesus pure. Breathe in Jesus pure because you're in, we're in his presence. So breathe him in. That's every promise, every prayer, the assurance, like he raised himself from the dead and is sitting in heaven, the right hand is far with the assurance that he's got us, Pastor Lil, he's got us. Pastor Jeff, he's got our needs. He knows them. He's well acquainted with our needs and with our prayers. So Lord, we thank you we do thank you that you are well aware of our needs. We breathe in the guarantee and the assurance in the name of Jesus. One more time, nice and deep, breathe in Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. You may return to your seats. I don't know how to move this, but we have to move anyway. Take Jesus with you. Take the promises with you. Take the guarantee with you. Not only back to your seat, but back to your homes. Back to your children. Hallelujah. 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 We've got the purest air in the Bronx right here. Breathe in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Oh, come on now, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. I don't know, still a little weak to me, Pastor Jeff. Still a little weak. Still a little weak. Come on now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Why don't we please welcome our own senior pastor, Pastor Jeffrey Williams, as he leads us into the second phrase, phase of worship. Give him glory. Mighty move of God. When he shows up the way he does. Wow. You know, that particular action Elder Nisi did is biblical. I'm going to show you when you was talking about breathing Jesus. It's a biblical act because God did it first. Genesis 2, 4, 2, 5, right? You know the story. Prayerfully do you do. No shrubs are on the earth, right? And God made, brought the water from the ground. And then he says in verse 7, he says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being so anything that was dead today is now come alive wow ah, lord god oh i love it if you came in with a dead spirit today you are now alive because God had instructed his daughter to tell you to breathe in Christ and come alive once again oh glory to God give him glory oh mm. once again God has proven it is by his breath which by is his spirit that we only can live and stand strong So when you get up, you get up tomorrow morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I like that. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. We are certainly unworthy of the goodness that God continues to show us. But yet he continued to do it anyway. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. You know, I don't know about you. But, you know, I don't just come to church. I never did came to church just to come to church. But to come alive because, you know, you know, for, uh, six days a week I'm walking. And I, I'm in the world and I'm doing things. And, you know, things leave me. Oh, God, I feel oppressed. Things come up on me. I, I need something to bring me alive. So I come to church and the Spirit of God comes. And he says, live, Jeffrey, live. And I'm good. Then I have to get over Wednesday, the hump day. So I got boot camp. So I'm feeling that certain way and I come to boot camp. And Pastor Rosa, God gives her a word that brings me alive. And I'm getting ready. I'm ready for Sunday. Breathe the breath of God. It's no joke. I'm telling you, as your senior pastor, it's no joke. It's what, it keeps us going as children of God. If we neglect it, and I pray that we don't, it's the one thing that will keep us alive. I'm reading heavily. I'm going to take the offering. Don't you worry. I'm reading about the end times, Matthew 24. And all the things that Jesus says that was going to happen, right? And in his time, in our time, and it's happening right now. But he says, don't worry. Don't be afraid. Ah, for this is just the beginnings of labor pain. For I got you. I got you. Children of the kingdom. God says, I got you. 
Don't walk. You walk by faith. You continue to walk by faith, not by what you see, not denying the reality. Because you and I know the reality is real, but God is even realer. Look at look, Minister Lee saying, I knew it, Cassie, the teacher in her. Realer. I saw her face, man. I, <laughs> There's vocabulary in the kingdom of heaven even teachers on earth don't have. Oh! Let me stop. <laughs> we were praying here. Oh, well, the pastors, we were praying here on Saturday. Was it Saturday? I don't remember what day. Was it Friday? And the move of God, the spirit of God came down. We consecrated this place by the instruction of God. You know why you saw what you saw today? Because the pulpit was consecrated. Union, uh, communion was taken. God gave us instructions. And look at the results. It's so simple. And I will tell you, put that on my tombstone when I go home. You throw, he's made it, he said it all the time. And walking with God is so simple. Just listen. As I told my granddaughter, Bariah, looking for, uh, she about, uh, praying for a job where she's at. In the Christian, in the church. Oh, Father. The name of it is Jubilee Ministries, right? Jubilee Ministries. And I told her, three things God gave me to instruct her. Pray, trust, and believe. Simple. Don't make it complicated. Pray, trust, and believe. My kids is not in church here. Pray, trust, and and believe I haven't had a job for six months pray trust and believe I haven't moved into the position God called me pray trust and believe period period oh oh sorry the pastors there, there, there are scriptures in the Bible where Jesus says things and in the end you see a period you know why that period is there? For us not to add. For us not to take away. But just to believe what he said. Oh, shut up on Sunday. Oh, God. Father, we pray and we trust and we believe you today. You will take care, she said, of your daughter, our needs. As we give you honor. As we lift you up. Not for what you can give us, but for who you are. Seek your kingdom first and all your righteousness. All else is added to us. Thank you, Lord. Give him glory. <laughs> Woo! This is the second part of our worship where we're going to give unto our Lord because he has given unto us. What has he given us? You will, walk, you, you will not walk out of here the same way you came in. He has given you new life. He has re-strengthened you, whether you know it or not. He has spoken into your life, even when you wanted it or not. Oh, God, he has given you so much today. He's given us so much today. So we will give back to him. Well, how will we do that, Pastor? We'll give it into our tithes and offerings. And there's four ways to give today. There used to be one, but now there's four. And they may keep adding on one day and adding on. And, you know, it's okay. Because times are always changing, right? But we're just going to do four today. The first way to give is in-person giving, which you will do in a little while. What you will do is that will instruct the ushers. If you need an envelope, you will put your cash in the envelope. And you will write your, your name on the envelope, your address. If it's a check, you will make it out to Love Gospel Assembly. And you will come up. And you will drop it to, uh, there will be an adult here, you will drop it in the offering basket. You will give your, come and before God and show, I love you, Lord. I could sit there and put it in the basket, but I come before your altar and give it to you. 
I'm glad, it's, I'm grateful. You will see, children, we will have the children's offering basket here. Why the children? Because we are teaching them also how to give. So that when God bless them, and I'm going to tell you something, he will. And he will ask and require finances of them for somebody. And they will give very easily because they know who their source is. It's not their job. It's not their boss. Oh, I know the boss likes to make you think it's him. Ah, but if God took his breath, he will be no boss no more. And you still will get blessed. So they will learn the children will be, the adult will be here and the child will be there. And they will come up under, under instructions of the ushers and they will give. The other way, the second way to give the QR code. Everybody know the QR code, right? Everybody's in tech, in tech. Even on TV, when they do commercials now, the QR code is showing. They're like, oh, God. But I guess it, it, it suits a purpose for this generation. You take out your camera, point it to the, to the QR code. It'll take you directly to lgabronx.org, where it will show you and give you directions how to give online. Amen. And if you are not here today and you're home and for some reason you can make it and you're looking at us right now, you can go to the same website, www.ljbronx.org, and it will give you simple instructions on how to give online. Now, if you find that impossible and you're at home or you're here and you didn't know about it and you found it possible that you, didn't, you, uh, you wasn't able to give, you didn't know we was giving, you can give that way, well, that's probably because... We don't have your email address and you don't have ours. So we're going to fix that today. Uh, you're going to email your, your email address to lgabronx at msn.com. Amen? And therefore, we will have your email address and you will have ours and everything will go flow in order. Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for your people, the gathering of your people, my Lord. Ah, for where you are, your word said, where two or three are gathered, you are there. There's more than two and three here now. Thank you, Lord. I pray they have been blessed by your presence and received what you have had for them and still have. For the best is yet to come. And I pray for those that have been giving for so long, my Lord. May you continue to bless their lives and, and Father, and that they may continue to get them strength in their body. That they may continue to work and give, my Lord, in the name of Jesus. Ah, that the ministry of the gospel will continue to flow. And for those that may be sitting here today, Lord, that you're looking at their hearts and they don't have anything to give. And there's a desire to give. I ask you as your son to honor their desire, my Lord, in the name of Jesus, until you open the door financially for them, that they may be able tangibly to give the next time they're here, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Honor their desire to give. And I pray, Father, that you continue to give, oh, Father, your mind, good stewardship to those that handle the finances, oh, God. That every dollar will go where it should be, Father. Every bill is paid. That the integrity of your people will always be in good standing, my Lord. Oh, Father, we give you glory today in the precious name of Jesus. All God's children say, amen. amen. Ushers, you may come down, please. Praise God that he's real arrest. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Instead of realer, real arrest. Everything is for his glory. Yes. Amen. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. 
across the hottest desert, I travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. Oh, Señor, si encuentro tu favor, por favor, escucha mi clamor. Desesperada espero estar donde tú estás. Cruzaría el gran desierto. Sin miedo a viajar por tu gloria, todo haría por ti para verte y mirarte como rey. For your glory, I will do anything. Just to see you, to behold you as my king. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta. Anhelo estar donde estás. Yo quiero estar donde estás. Anhelo estar donde estás. Por tu gloria, todo haría por ti para verte y mirarte como rey. Por tu gloria, todo haría por ti para verte y mirarte como rey. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where.
Why don't we give the Lord a loud hallelujah? Children may be released to children's Sunday school. <clears throat> you know how you know that God is in the place? Well, besides the many places, many ways. Is <laughs> when the enemy tries to show up. That's how you know that King Jesus is in the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Let's give a shout out to our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, you are worthy. At the sound of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, for those who came in during our wonderful time of worship, greetings again to Love Gospel Assembly. Welcome this afternoon. We do want to as well, we want to greet and give much love to First Lady Dorothy Bailey and to the Bailey family. We want each of you to know that you are greatly missed but are continually in our prayers. And we can't wait to see you again. We also want to greet Lady Nita Kaufman, the Kaufman family. Greetings of, yes, please, yes. The Kaufman clan. Also want to greet our senior pastor, Jeffrey Williams, his, his wife, Lady Carmen, I don't see her. Well, let her know that we love her. So listen, I, I wanted to put uh, First Lady Dorothy's name at this point, but I, did, I wanted to honor her at first. But we do want to introduce Pastor Shelley Jackson. She has something that the First Lady has sent for us to see. Pastor Shelley. Thank you, Elder. Amen. Amen. God is good. Mm, amen. Last week, as you uh, may know, if you were here or if you were on social media, we acknowledged our bishop, our beloved, the late Bishop Ronald L. Bailey. We honored his life. Amen. His legacy. Amen. And his love for the Lord and for this great house, amen. And we, I want you to know that Lady Dorothy was so blessed. She was so blessed that we took the time to remember Bishop. I told her he's gone, but never, ever, 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 ever forgotten. And neither is she, amen. Amen. Now, I know that we look forward to the day when she will come and join with us in celebrating Jesus. So she will come and be in the multitude with us, and we will, as family, just worship the Lord and enjoy his joy and his peace. And we look forward to that day when she'll be here in person. But until then, we have the next best thing. Greetings, everyone. I'm First Lady Dorothy Bailey, widow of our beloved Bishop Ronald L. Bailey. I was asked to share a few words on encouragement, and I selected Hebrews 13.8, which states, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That was one of the first scriptures 
I memorized when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior many years ago. It helped me then and is helping me more now than ever before. It encourages me to continue following my Lord Jesus Christ no matter what. Bishop and I were married 55 years. We have been blessed with wonderful children and grandchildren that brought us joy and he will always be in our hearts. Sometimes I begin to reminisce about the times we've shared and my emotions start to stir up. The Holy Spirit gently lets me sense his presence and allows me to release whatever I'm feeling at that time. Then, if I am sensitive in the spirit, he would be ready to minister to me with a scripture for each emotion. At times, I feel sorrow, which is followed by tears. For that, there's Psalm 126, verse 5, which says, Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. Other times, it's laughter as I go through old pictures and videos. For that, there's Job 8.21. He will fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouting. I recall one day when I was away with the family and went out window shopping without them. Loneliness creeped in because I was so accustomed to going away with my husband by my side, walking hand in hand. For loneliness, there's 1 John 4, 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. When I see how much the economy has changed in the last few years, and the dollar has diminished in value, that has become a concern to everyone and the enemy of my soul tries to bring it fear. For that, there's Philippians 4.19, and God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. This March makes one year since my dear husband went to be with the Lord. During the time he was in transition, he asked me if I would be all right I'd answer, yes, hon, and one day I will be with you in heaven. He would look so much at peace hearing that. I don't know what you might be going through at this time in your life. All I can say is that having a personal relationship with God through his son, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has kept me going through many ups and downs in my life. Last but not least, is another scripture I learned when I started my walk with Jesus. I truly believe this is one of the most important aspects of a Christian's relationship with the Lord. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. God bless you all. Amen, amen, amen. We love you, Lady Dorothy, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Amen. Elder Nisi. Hallelujah. You don't really truly know what you have until it's gone. That was beautiful. Thank you, First Lady.
we like you will see him again, along with our loved ones, our children, those that we love. Heaven is a crowded place. Am I the only one who believes that? Heaven is a crowded place. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we're not going to do the, the, we put in a prayer request during worship. So remember what God gave you today. Don't let it go. Don't just go home with it, but go and live your life with those promises. Amen? Amen. Just reminded, a reminder, excuse me, that barely needed, the church needs men's shoes, boots, sneakers. If you have any of these items that you can give away or those maybe that you may be able to purchase, please see Deacon Betty for details. Deacon Betty, can you please stand? This lady right here, okay? Um, if you're gonna, I'm sure I speak for her as well for everybody else. If you're gonna donate, please donate things that you would give to your children, things that you would give to your brother, things that you would hand to your husband. In other words, don't bring garbage. We want to continue to pray for our educational building. God is doing a great work, a great thing. Stay tuned. A good report is coming. At this time, we'd like to welcome Pastor Lillian, who has a special announcement to make. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. So good to be in the house. Amen. Because God is good. So, you know, it's March 10th, which means summer is around the corner. And summer, you know, is a wonderful time for evangelism. Our pastor for the last three years has been stressing the importance of evangelism. We're not all called to be evangelists. We're all called to evangelize. So you can't do the work of an evangelist even without the title. Amen? You share your testimony. Tell people what Jesus has done for you. The world is in trouble. People are hungry. And we've got the answer. So this is a great time for evangelism. And so Jesus Week Bronx will be coming up soon. They've already started citywide training and meetings and all kinds of things. There is information in the church email, but we want to make a special invitation. All leadership, ministers, leaders, deacons, every single one of you from the oldest to the youngest is invited for next Saturday. There's going to be a kickoff workshop uh, next Saturday from 8 to 2. There'll be all kinds of training, different topics, different strategies to use when you evangelize. And then from 2 to 4... There will be a door-to-door -door evangelism practice. So the things you heard during the day, you can put to practice. They're going to send people out in teams. It's going to be exciting. So please join up. It's going to be, I don't know if it's, on, oh, it is on the flyer, New Testament Temple, 3350 Seymour Avenue, right here in the Bronx. Easy to get to. They're going to be giving a light breakfast. They're going to be giving lunch. But you must register because they want to make sure they have enough for everybody that's there. So Minister Frances Martin will be in the vestibule after the service, signing people up. You know, she is our resident evangelist. She is a resident evangelist. So Minister Frances, who heads up the evangelism department, the teams, everyone, every single one of us, she will be there. If you can't sign up today, you're not 100% sure, you can look online. You can register at Jesus Week movement.org so please sign up be there enjoy it we've got to share the gospel amen we have got to share the gospel people need to hear about jesus and you don't need to know the scriptures from hebrew to the greek from genesis to all you need to know is i was blind but now i can see i was lost but now i'm found i was in chains and bondage but now i have been set free you don't have to do it like that. That's how I do it. But you could do it whichever way the Lord leads you to do it. Just do it. Amen? Do it. Because God is on the move. And we want to move with him. So God bless you. We love you. Elder Nisi has other announcements. Hallelujah. <laughs> so.
Stop laughing, Pastor Jeff. Stop laughing. Pastor Jeff is laughing about the switch off with the, uh, the tops here. Pastor Shelley, wait, wait, Pastor Shelley. You trained us well. Just do it. Hallelujah. Discipleship and discipleship one, two, one and two, two and one, one and two. Every Sunday here in this temple at 10 a.m. So if you're new to the church, in particular if you're new to the church, we welcome you to come to learn the foundation of the Bible, to learn what our church is all about, to hear the word of God from trained men and women who have gone through discipleship themselves right here in the temple. In addition, while that's happening, in the back every Sunday, we have adult Sunday school that are known as the Disciples in Christ Sunday, adult Sunday school. Every Sunday at 10 a.m. going on simultaneously as Discipleship 1 and Discipleship 2. So there's a lot going on here, but I always say, listen, when we were closed down, right, came back, everybody was like, we don't do nothing. Well, now, well, now we're up and we're doing. We're doing everything in Jesus' name. So come on out. Be a part of Sunday school as well. Children's Church, um, if you're getting here at 10 with your children or grandchildren like we did this morning, Children's Church downstairs, and then they come up around 11-ish, and then they can go back down for Children's Sunday School at 11.30. So we have a place for the children, too. I said I'm a product. I know a few of us here of being little, 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 little in church, being dragged out to the tent meetings. Gigi Avila, tent meetings. Oh, man, I was there. I was there at Yankee Stadium. Where he came from Yankee Stadium? Well, we were there. Yes, we were. And he was on stage with his hammer. Were you there that day? He was on stage with his hammer. Well, wait, that's, that's one of the day. That's one of the day. Well, listen, bring out your children. Bring out your grandchildren. It doesn't matter if they come out with their coloring books or their trucks or their cars or their dolls. Okay, I did. But while I was playing Little House in the Seat, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, was settling in my heart. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Bring them. The church needs them. The kingdom needs them. We need the children. They're the next generation. No after service recording today. No session today. Okay, so for those who stay to cheer on, to champion the gospel to men and women in the church, it will not be held today. Boot camp every Wednesday right here in the temple, 6.30 p.m. Yeah, we can, we can clap for that. 6.30 to 8.30. Boot camp. Why, are you called, why is it called boot camp, Elder? I'm sure it's called boot camp because we're an army, the army of the Lord. And in this thing, you need every piece of armor. You need every weapon. I always say, I say, I have an aircraft carrier all the way out there for anything that I might be missing. <laughs> Am I the only one? Oh, no, I don't know. Nuggets of hope every Wednesday. Boy, you guys, are, Pastor Jeff, I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm praying for you. Every Wednesday, Nuggets of Hopes comes out with a brand new uh, short word from the men and women of this congregation that you know, that you fellowship with, that you knock elbows with, um, sharing their heart, sharing a word from the Lord for you. Every Wednesday, Facebook is on, Instagram, YouTube as well. Presently, they're speaking on the Sermon on the Mount. Rich, rich, rich stuff. Antioch, before I go any further, before I forget, Antioch has a table outside, a clearance table. Now, listen, don't go now going saying that El Denise said everything here was clearance. So it has to be 50 cent, okay? It's clearance and other, also other items, uh, price ranging from $2 all the way up to 50 if you're interested in getting a large thing of CDs, etc. But one of the things that I want to speak about, really mention, is... Um, CDs of Pastor Sam Cologne, who's gone to be with the Lord, of when he talked about, and probably the most equipped person in this church's history, to give the beginnings of this church, where we came from, where we were birthed out, the history of Love Gospel Assembly. So if you're interested in hearing um, one of the last things that this man of God did while on this earth, okay, we welcome you to go and, and, and avail yourself to purchasing that set. They also have books. They have uh, bookmarks. They have pens. They have, there's nothing that you cannot afford on that table. So avail yourself to it. The monies go to a good course to Antioch. I don't know if it goes to, 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 
to what funds it goes to, but I can tell you it goes to Antioch. It's a good buy. Everything out there will help enrich your soul. Even a pen that reminds you of scripture. Amen? Oh, man, Pastor Jeff, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Listen, regarding Antioch, registration is going even now for Antioch semester, for classes, for seminars. Registration is still available to March 25th. You have to go online to the ASUM.org. I, I don't, I, hopefully it's behind me to register. If you have any questions, I'm sure you can touch base with Deacon Raquel. Deacon Raquel, can you just stand for a moment, please? And she'll be able to um, answer, thank you, answer any questions, I'm sure. All righty, so you have a couple of classes even now off, being offered over Zoom. You have two classes, Systematic Theology on Monday and Survey of the Old Testament and New, and New Testament Leaders on Saturdays. We have uh, Minister Diane teaching the Monday class and, Minister, and Pastor Michael Rivera teaching the Saturday class again. These classes are offered online, offered via Zoom. We also have coming up two Zoom seminars. One is Waiting on God by our own Pastor Lillian Gutierrez on April 18th and April 25th. An Effective Urban Ministry by Pastor Rosa Power Brown, which will be in June, June 6th, June 13th, June 20th. Now, we also have an in-person seminar being offered in the church by Sister Yvette Corbin, Pastor Michael Corbin's wife, um, and that will be held on May 11th, and it's called Becoming a Person of Influence. That will be held downstairs in our reception hall. Now, regarding Zoom, we have a Zoom prayer meeting coming up this Friday. If you look on your email, you'll get the Zoom ID and the passcode to it. All are welcome to come and join us in prayer this Friday, coming up. All right? What Friday? This Friday. Men and Troop also have a weekly Zoom meeting every week. This, this week is the, on March 19th is the next meeting, but it's every week from 7 to 8.30 p.m., and they discuss things that men need to hear and men want to hear. We also have a Psalm, uh, Palm Sunday is coming up. A reminder, March 24th, Palm Sunday, remembers our Lord Jesus walking into Jerusalem on a donkey as the people screamed out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It'll be the Sunday before Easter, what is, the world knows Easter, what we know is Resurrection Sunday. Okay, so Palm Sunday, March 24th, come on out. It's a beautiful occasion to remember so just imagine yourself there at Jerusalem at that time, just worshiping our Lord and glorifying his name. Marriage 180 welcomes ministers Freddie and Roseanne Rosado on March 24th from 5 to 7 p.m. So see your email for Zoom details, and you can speak to the ministers Woody. I don't know if they're here today. Ministers Woody here? There you go. Hey, guys. Blessings, guys. Good to see you both. You can see those lovely, that lovely couple, if you have any further questions, okay? Um, now, this is exciting. We have a Good Friday in-house service. Coming up Good Friday, March 20, coming up March 29th, Good Friday at 7 p.m., featuring, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but featuring various speakers from right here within the congregation, men and women speaking on the seven last words of Jesus. That should be exciting. Come on out. The, the Love Gospel Educational Ministry also wants to invite you to a general session on the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit on the last Sunday of this month, March 31st. Guest speaker, that speaker will be Minister Lazan for that day. And the last announcement that's not on this before I introduce Pastor Jeff, because I, I really feel you have the word, a word of the Lord. So I kind of flew through this. Don't look at me like that. I know you have a word of the Lord. That's why I flew through the announcements. I really want to get Pastor Jeff up here. Um, but the last announcement is one that's not on the board behind me. And that is that uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the coat room. I'm overseer of that ministry. But the coat room needs help. We need volunteers. Um, it's not easy doing that job. I know it's not, in many people's eyes, not here, in another church, in many people's eyes, 
it's a lowly ministry. It's not one where you teach. It's not one where you preach. It's not one where people really notice you. You don't walk anyone to your seat. Nobody really notices you. You can't boss anyone around. No, did I say that? I didn't mean that. I didn't, I didn't mean that. It's a ministry of servanthood. It's a ministry of serving one another. It's a ministry that's been a part of this church since we've been in education of when the Lord placed it in my heart to set it in place. So I'm going to come and I'm going to do what I do every couple of months. We need help. We need volunteers. We need men and we need women to volunteer. You say, Elder, I don't have every Sunday. Come and speak to Devin. Devin is the leader of the ministry. I am the overseer. Come and speak to Devin or speak to me if you have to. And offer two Sundays out of the month. Offer one Sunday out of the month. We need help. Okay, folks? We need help. So I'm coming to my family to ask that of you. We need help. So I want to thank those who have diligently, in particular, Susan's been with us, with us forever. Those who have diligently been with us throughout the years. Those who are not even here in the church anymore. And those that are here presently helping. I don't want to mention any, I don't want to forget anyone's name. Everybody, people always get offended when you forget someone's name. But I want to talk about that group of ladies and men in the past that have helped us. We need both. We need men and we need women. Please hearken to this call in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Please stand to your feet. As we welcome our own Pastor Jeffrey. Give him glory. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you. We thank you as your in your daughter's heart today to thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We truly thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know, just for, just for a word to the wise, there's no such thing as a lowly job in the kingdom. No such thing. Anywhere that you could give your gift to God, I don't care if it's scrubbing gum off the floor, God receives glory out of it. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Because I scraped up many of gums in my time. And that's the best place to be, man. What you call lowly, God says, I call highly. Ooh. Just word to the wise. When God actually brings a call for your help, just remember I was telling uh, uh, Elder Nisi was asking me about my, my retreat, and I was telling her how great it was, you know. And I was telling her, you know, uh, there was this young man there that he was from uh, Macedonia, Egypt, and he was a Muslim, was. He's uh, serving uh, God now through Jesus Christ. And I'm always curious when I hear things like that. So I sat him down at the table and to hear his testimony. And these were his words. He says, people have been telling him about the gospel and talking to him about the Bible, but you know, he's a Muslim, so he don't. So one day, he just sat down. I guess he just got tired. And he sat down. And he said, I wish he was here today. I have pictures of him. He opened up the scripture to Genesis 1, and God spoke to him and changed his life. And he received Jesus in his life. And now he's a born-again believer. Pray, I forget his name, but you pray for him. Pray for those that do, God, do call out of that. Because it's hard because their families are still, you know, walking in the Muslim faith. And it, it becomes very difficult. I say it because not, there's no such thing as a lowly place. When God calls you, he calls you. And he tests you. Just so you can get a vision, I went from here to here. You got it? Many of us have. 
So they don't ever say there's a place that lowly. God is asking for a call. And he's not even asking you to clean the house, which I pray that he called you to do so you could better take care of the house. He's asking you to handle people's coats. See, you can minister. You don't know. You know, you know so I never did it. But I would imagine if I was doing the coat, holding people's coat. How's your day? And they probably tell you, God, that they, you can pray for them quiet, quiet, while you're putting up their coat. So that way they come in the congregation, they're ready. <laughs> See, well, you got to look at ministry, man. you putting on, let me get your coat, Will. Uh, Will, how's your day? Well, now you know it's been very, come over here, Will, while I'm putting up your coat. Father, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen your son for the service today. Thank you that, I, that you give me the ability to carry his coat and put up his coat. Oh, come on. Because God gets glory out of that. I know we think he don't, but he does. Why? Because of simple obedience. Simple obedience. So listen, God has spoken through his daughter. The choice is yours. God always, I never take the choice from nobody because God never did. The choice is yours. He makes the call, right? Then he leaves it in your hands. Glory to God. Listen, that is not what I'm preaching about today, but Father, I thank you. I always thank you for your goodness and grace and Father, for the uh, privilege to speak your word and minister your word to your people, my Lord. I thank you, Lord. Let no flesh in me glory in your presence today, Lord. And I ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh Father, that, Lord, I will never lean on the arm of flesh that comes in the disguise of humanism and intellectualism, religion, oh God, philosophy, my Lord, uh, into uh, culturalism, uh, traditionalism, Lord, in the name of Jesus. But I will always lean on the revelatory word of the living God that comes by the power of your spirit, oh Father, revelation. Thank you, Lord, and may your word fall on good soil today as the Holy Spirit waters it in the precious name of Jesus and all God's people say. I pray that prayer not all the time because God required me to do so for me. This is a place where you can get, your flesh can get involved. And if your flesh get involved, it's not a good thing. This is a holy, holy pulpit. It's not holy because we're here. It's holy because God is in us and he's here. And he wants the attention, the attention alone. So I do that for me. So I remember who's in charge. Oh, glory to God. God's given me safeguards. I don't know about you. He gives me safeguards. Because he knows you can get a little... And I don't mind the safeguards because I need them. How many of you love salt? Go ahead, you can raise your hand. Listen, they, they scared Woody. They, look, Jerry, they scared Jerry Woody here. You think he's taking pictures, bro? <laughs> oh. And it's so easy to get. I mean, you go in the supermarket and everywhere, you go to people's homes, you go to restaurants, there's salt all over the place. It's such a hot commodity. It really is. People love, you see people in the restaurant, oh, you know, oh my God. They do that because they, maybe the food is a little bland. We're going to get to that. Well, salt wasn't always easy to come by. And I, I'm, I'm so uh, glad that I saw that they're doing uh, the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount because the scripture that God gave me is from one of those teachings. When he, when he called, he was on the mountain and he called, there was a crowd. He called the disciples to himself and he taught. That was, uh, you know what thing about Jesus? He just loves to teach. He takes anything and make a teaching out of it. 
And I tried to model myself. I said, Lord, I want to be like that. Just anything you see. There's a teaching. I was, <laughs> I was looking at Ben Hur the other day, last night, because I couldn't sleep. And I always loved my movie, even as a kid. And Carmen loved it. She had, she had the VHS tape. I can't find it, but I'm going to get it for her again. And somehow I couldn't sleep because of time going forward. My body's affected by it. Although it's 10 o'clock, uh, you know, it's really 9 o'clock. And, you know, it's 12 o'clock, it's really 11 o'clock. So even the clock says 12, my body says it's 11. So it's not quite lining up quite yet. So I went to bed pretty, I was, going, I was sitting in the living room and I'm like, I can't. And Carmen goes, I got to bed and got out and got to bed. I know she thought I must have been schizophrenic or something. You're just getting up and you're, what's wrong with you? So, but I went to the living room. And just flipped through the channels. And uh, Ben Hur was on, and uh, what's that classic, uh, uh, Ted's classic uh, movies, the old, the very old movies, that channel, TCM, I think it is. And Ben Hur was on. And I didn't get the whole thing, but I know the story. Now I know Hollywood tend to, to, to embellish, if you will. But sometimes I look at things and I take what's good and what God can show me out of it. I don't always throw the baby out with the bath water. And I'm looking at Ben Hur and I see it many, many times. And, and this, the part that, oh, that really ministered to me last night, and it always does, is where, long story short, he, 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 there's a parade or whatever have you going through Rome. And there's a, if you watch it, there's, they're on the roof and the rock falls. And he gets himself in trouble with Rome. So he finds himself going to the gallows. And as he's going to the gallows and they're whipping him and doing all these things, Jesus is there. But he got on his carpenter clothes. And he's going there and Ben Hur falls. And Jesus gives him some water. Now, in all the things that's going on, because of what happened, they blamed Ben Hur because they thought it was a kind of assassination attempt, and they took his mother, his sister, to the cave where they were, and they end up getting leper, leprosy. So Ben Hur is very bitter behind this. After, but he comes out of all the, everything that happens, and he comes back, and he's in Rome, in Jerusalem, right where the Romans are. And what happens is that he goes to see, long story short, he goes to see his mother and sister got leprosy. Remember, he gave Jesus a cup of water. Jesus, don't forget. So he goes, and as he goes to see, he goes to see because they told him his brother and his sister was dead. But they weren't really dead. They were in there with leprosy. So he found out, and he wanted to go see them, and he did in the beginning, but the, his his. Whatever, I think it was his girlfriend or who wanted to marry him, the lady that was there, uh, uh, told him no, because it'll break your mother and sister's heart if, they, if you see them like this. So he goes away, and then Jesus is now teaching in the movie, right? And he's teaching, everybody's telling him, go to Jesus, go listen to what he got to say. But he is so bitter for what Rome did. So what happens? He goes away. He's going to the, he go he goes to the the, the place where he used to live because they they uh, over the Rome had overtaken it closed it down, and the lady's there. And then he goes he leaves there and he goes to where Jesus was crucified was being crucified. Wow, and that's where my heart was like he's being crucified, and he's there, and he don't have a clue what's going on. He just see he he just see there's a part where he, Jesus is coming with the cross. And Jesus falls down. Remember, Jesus gave him some water when he was in trouble. And Jesus falls down. And Ben Hur comes as he passed by and says, I know that man. And as Jesus falls on his knees, he gives him some water. Here's the thing, man. He gives him the water. Jesus, he, he looks, he holds the water. He didn't drink, he just holds the water. He goes on and they crucify him. So Ben Hur goes back to the cave. Oh, my God. And then he goes back where the crucifixion had happened. And while Jesus was crucified, the rain came down, and he's not even there in the cave where the lepers are. The mother and the daughter's there. And as the rain, Jesus, don't forget, as the rain came down, they were healed of their leprosy. Woo! Just talk about gratitude. Jesus, don't forget. You, whatever, listen, whatever little you do for him, later on, he'll pay it back triple. 
Oh my God. I said, I saw that man. I said, and I, I know it's not written in scriptures, uh, uh, but the principle of how Jesus don't forget. His daughter, his mother and daughter was healed of leprosy simply because he gave Jesus a cup of water. And some people don't want to put on people, take people's coats. Ah, Jesus don't forget. Now, I'm not trying to run a guilt trip on you. I bring a reality check. We are in the kingdom. We are working for the king. And the king has great resources. Now, we're not working for those resources, but when we're working for them, we're showing gratitude. Because <laughs> ah, you're going to, you better show gratitude. Why? Because one day, you're going to find yourself at this altar. Ah, the check is not in the mail and the rent is due, Lord. Please help me. Come on. I've been there, done that. That's why when I cleansed the temple, I did it to the best of my life. How many of you have been here when I was a sexton? How many of you have ever say that the temple was dirty? Had gum on the carpet? Never. Why? Because my mind was not, it was not really on you, but in the, it was on you, but not really on you. It was about who called me into the position. Oh, who I was working for. The king of glory. And I always keep that in mind, even as a preacher. You're working for me, Jeff. Oh, and the gratitude is always there. I share that with you so we can know, get a perspective in the kingdom when God makes a call for help. Oh, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we go back to the salt as he teaching, see, because great teachings, right? He, go, he, he taught them, and he taught them many things on the, on, uh, the, on the mount. They called the Sermon on the Mount, on the mountain. And there was great topics that he taught. And one of the topics he taught was about salt. Now, he goes on into about the light of the world, but, and I understand that. But God, the Holy Spirit, when I was doing this, I want you to stop right there. Simply because you said it, evangelism. What does evangelism have to do with salt? I'm going to show you. Oh, glory to God. Let us read. Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus tells the disciples. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything or anybody for that concern except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. End of story. There's so much in there, man. I had to stop before. I would have five pages. You would have been here. <sighs> I, I'm conscious of your time, boy, but when the Holy Spirit's flowing, you're like writing down stuff. And like, oh, wait a minute. Even this morning, I had to change some stuff. I was reading. I, like, this there. I added some stuff. Like, okay, Jeff. Because we don't want them falling asleep on me. Just kidding. The joy of the Lord will always be your strength. The, you, the unique quality back in the days of old, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the unique quality of salt back in the days of old was its ability to preserve food. It eliminated the dependence on the seasonal availability of food. And it allowed travel over long distances. In other words, salt had the ability to keep food in good condition for long periods of time. Regardless of what season the food may appear. Most people just know salt as a, as a simple, simply as a white particle of food seasoning that is found in shakers on the tables in your local diners or one's kitchen's cabinet or on a, one's uh, dining room table. By the way, the topic of this message is come out of the salt shaker. Come out of the salt shaker. You, you see the thing about salt, if, it's, if your food is bland and it's on the table and you don't put the salt on the food, it's going to still be bland. Oh, you're going to get it in a few minutes. 
Oh, glory to God. Come out of the salt shaker. However, in the ancient days and Middle Ages, it was very difficult to obtain salt. It was not like now. And therefore, it was highly val a highly valued trade item. Therefore, it wasn't something that everyone would have so easily in their household or possession like we do now. For the Roman Republic and the Empire controlled the price of salt, increasing it to raise money for wars or lowering it to be sure that the poorest citizens could easily afford this important part of their diet. Therefore, it would be safe to say that salt was crucial and important economically and socially. Salt. We take it for granted because we have it now. It's so easy accessible. But it wasn't easy accessible then. The word salt Jesus uses in verse 13 of chapter 5 is a Greek translation word halas. It means prudence. Which simply means one who is wise in handling practical matters. Also one who exercises good judgment and careful about one's conduct. In other words, what Jesus was basically stating is that those who practice these characteristics are highly valued and can and will be influential in the lives of other people. For the scripture states in Proverbs 10.9, Whoever walks in integrity, meaning moral soundness, uncorrupt walks securely. But who makes his ways crooked will be found out. The message Bible puts it like this. I love it. I didn't give you all that one. That's okay. Honesty. Honestly, honesty lives confident and carefree. But the shifty <laughs> is sure to be exposed. <laughs> Ah, oh, there's some shifty characters around. And God says, oh! Me, pastor, there's shifty characters in the body of Christ. You better believe it. That's why we need Jesus. What do you think? Don't come here with you. Oh, oh. You know, it's those that when they graduate discipleship and they enter into the body, and then God, their eyes get opened up a little more, a little more like, whoa, I didn't see that before. Oh, heck, I know I ain't seen that before. Yeah, but it's okay because it's part of growth. But the scripture says iron sharp is iron. So I'm just, a lot of times I just like to be prevention. You know, especially newcomers, I want to get, you know, prepare you for, you know, you're coming into the mainstream of the body. Because in discipleship, you're feeling good and everything is happening. And, and then you step into the mainstream of the body, you're like, whoa, okay. But that's where you grow. That's where things are exposed, where God starts to tear down and build you up by the power of his spirit. It's not a, it's not a happy place to be, but it's a necessity. In Matthew 5, 8, up on the mountainside, a secluded, a secluded place with no distractions. Jesus normally does, does that. Read Mark. He gets up in the middle of the night, early, before, while before the morning, while nobody's in his ear. Master, I need this, and master, I need that, and master, could you bless me here? Master, could you know? Hey, you don't mind doing it. But he teaches us a lesson, in Mark, right? He gets up early in the morning, gets before the Father, and he starts to pray. I'm sure he's giving thanks. And then he does ministry. Oh, there's a, there's a method to what Jesus does. Jesus taught his disciples some very important kingdom principles. And one of those principles where blessed are, is in the, are the pure in heart. Pure in heart does not mean without sin, but the pure in heart has secured their heart in God through Jesus Christ and his spirit or her spirit is constantly sanct being sanctified of all requests. Oh, it's all going to connect. Why would Jesus use the metaphor or the comparison of salt, if you will? Because salt in his time period, preserves and prevents decaying or rotting of meat, that is, because there was no refrigeration system in Jesus' time. He, you know, he couldn't get up in the middle of the night like I do, and, you know, I'm sneaking past Lady Garland, I'm in the refrigerator, one o'clock in the morning, is there something to eat? <laughs> Confession, Jerry, is good for the soul. There was 
none of that then. Oh, I don't think we could last in those days. Especially no refrigeration. You kidding me? You got refrigerators now. I was looking in, in uh, I think it was uh, Best Buy. David knows. I think it's Best Buy. Where you, you can get YouTube on the fridge. I was walking by. I said, good God almighty. Now I don't have to turn the TV while I'm getting my food. I just watch YouTube. Yo, crazy stuff. Isn't it insane? There was no refrigeration in Jesus' time. So perishable, perishables like fish that was caught would be salted and transported to Jerusalem and other cities for sale. By using the metaphor salt, Jesus was speaking of the status and impact his disciples then and now would have on the world through him and his spirit. His followers then and now are the, uh, are the seasoning and preserve the force of the world, this world, in the sense that they will protect mankind by the gospel and the power of his spirit. From that which is, from that which is tasteless, meaning empty and a bland existence, Jesus states in John 10.10, 10, the thief purpose, and this is the LT verse, the thief purpose, his intention, in other words, the devil, is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose, Jesus says, and my intention, you heard it here today, the word intention keeps coming up. Jesus is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Look to your, your neighbor and tell them, would you please come out of the salt shaker? See, you, you don't still don't get it. You are the preservative. That if this world, if you don't go out and you don't tell them the gospel, they're dying, they're decaying, they're rottening, and God says, you are the seasoning. Just like we were dying and decaying in our sin, and God came and used somebody to put the salt of the gospel. So that you won't be bland and that you won't be empty. You heard what God said to through Eleanor today? Breathe in. Because I know you're empty today. You need some salt. Whoa. <laughs> and today I'll be your salt. <laughs> oh, you'll get it sooner or later. You, you, we're waiting for somebody else to change the world. God says, get out of the salt shaker. The only way the world's going to get changed is by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's in you. Woo, come on. We're complaining about what's going on in our neighborhoods. We're complaining about what's going on in the world. But what are we doing? Hiding in a secluded place, in your comfortable comforter, your chair, your recliner, and the world is decaying and rotting, and you don't like it, but you are the preservative. Oh. Bishop used to say it, man, Bishop Kaufman. The pastor's running from the urban city. They had assault to, the, to, to preserve this city. And no, I, I can't. Let them rot is what you're really saying. I got mine. Well, let me tell you something about that. I think it's in Deuteronomy. Pastor David, correct me if I'm wrong. He's a scholar in his own right. The one thing required about your blessing and Deuteronomy says, when you go and get you got yours, go back and get your, get your brother so they can get theirs. Well, I don't know those people out there. Jesus does. Nobody knew you either. Nobody knew me either, but Jesus did. Suppose someone has said, and God says, whoever led you to the Lord, God has spoken to us. I want you to go get so so. No, let them rot. Let them decay. Let them perish. See, because that's what we're really saying as a body of Christ when we don't evangelize. Come out of your salt shaker. Jesus tells his disciple, you are the salt of the earth. You are the preservative of this earth, of mankind. There's no one else. The, poli the politician's not going to do it. They're crazy. Yes, yes, yes. You can come, I'll pray for you. Boy, that is not going to do it. 
The judicial system is not going to do it. They legalized marijuana. How are they going to help us? Come on, this stuff is real. You're going to do it and I'm going to do it. By going out and bring, bringing the gospel to this world. And the same way someone brought the gospel to us, somebody came out of this salt shaker for us. Who likes to sit down in a restaurant and their food is bland and don't put salt on it? You grab that salt shaker in a minute. Jesus knew what he was doing when he used this metaphor. You are the salt of the earth. In other words, we were called, chosen by God through Jesus Christ. Those that are born again believers, by the way. To be preservative to mankind here on earth. By the power of the word of God and the Holy Spirit. That they may not come to destruction or to eternal demise. Our responsibility is to preserve them with the gospel so that when they stand before God, God will never say, depart from me. I never knew you. Oh, glory. In contrast, Jesus goes on to tell the disciples, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? I'm sure they were, <laughs> here, here goes the, the, the picture image. <laughs> They're scratching their heads on the mouth. I don't know. You're right. Once salt loses flavor, how can we make it salty again? That's a very good question, Lord. Now, according to science, where's Mr. Lee Sam? I got to get this right. <laughs> According to science, salt itself is sodium chloride. It is extremely stable. However, if salt is exposed to water, diluted or diluted, the sodium chloride can be dissolved and removed. And the salt will lose its essence, its essential contact, because it's diluted. Oh, here we go. Or oh, saltiness, if you will. Oh, God. It looks like the salt. It looks like the salt. It looks like the salt. But it's no longer useful. You look like you're a man and woman of God. You look like you're a child of the kingdom. Oh, but you lost your flavor. Oh, glory to God. I, when I saw that, I, God gave me that. I was like, whoa, boy, Lord. <sighs> Think about it. Those that tend to water down the gospel, causing it to lose its usefulness. Don't get me wrong. The gospel itself will always be potent. It comes from Jesus himself. <laughs> but watered down, it's useless. It's when you take a little bit of this and put it in there, and a little bit of that, and put it in there. You don't realize the, the usefulness and uh, the uselessness is becoming. Although it's potent in your hands because you water it down, because you add so many things in you, with you, it has no power. But although, although the word itself still has power. Ain't that something? Come out of your salt shaker. Salt is very important, and it can lose its usefulness as it's diluted. And as the enemy comes, and she said it, life happens if we're not careful. It dilutes the potency in us that we can't evangelize. This is why we pray. This is why we get before God's presence. This is why we get into worship. This is why we gather together. Not just here in the temple, but at home. Wherever you find yourself, give God some time. Yeah. 
The apostle Paul told, told Timothy, his spiritual son, in 2 Timothy 3, 5, this. There will come a time when people will have a form of godliness. They will look like salt. They will look like they're seasoned. Or they can talk a good talk. But denying its power. You know, you ever heard that saying, talk is cheap? I was, I was, visit, I was uh, meeting with some, uh, my father and his sons yesterday, and I was, and I was showing them that, he, you know, it says talk is cheap. You, you, you need the power of God. It's very important. It's the thing that helps me to preach on this pulpit. It's the thing that helps them to preach. If I didn't have the anointing and the power of God, oh, let me tell you something, I'll be stumbling all over my words, and I'll be looking at you with fear. But it's the anointing. See, I try to work very hard, right? Okay, we work very hard not to lose our flavor. Because I got to come before you. I got to walk these streets. And God touched my heart. And sometimes people stop me in the street and the conversation starts one way and it ends up another. I have got to be salty. Oh, come on. See, because the person that's talking to me, he's empty. She's empty. She's bland. She's tired of existing. In this world that she thinks is no good. But everything God creates is good. She's just empty. And she needs some salt. He needs some salt. He needs us. Oh, glory to God. Well, as it is stated in the New Living Translation, they will act religious... I, can't, you know, I, was, I was also teaching yesterday the difference between religiosity and spirituality. Jesus said, those that worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. He never said religion. Most people come to church, they're expecting a religion. Oh, but when you come here, you will not get nothing religious. You get just what you see, the move of the Holy Spirit. What you see is the joy of the Lord. What you see is that practice of that rule book. There's nothing religious here. And we would have, and you know what? As long as I've seen you, Pastor, religiosity will stay out the door. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Oh, that's why certain preaching, when you, you, you hit the hammer right on the nail, or oh, when God moves to you, there's just certain people where those spirits come up. Ah, oh, because they understand those religious spirits come up. They can't handle it, boy, because God is here. There's nothing religious about Jesus. Jesus is on the scene, and everybody that's religious, they got to act up. Elvisi. Oh, God, what's that? Oh, Lord, hammer. And you know what? You can stay here if you want to, but if you stay here too long, you're going to get saved. Because we are salty people. <laughs> ah, come out of your salt shaker. Stop hiding. Oh, there's some people need to be seasoned. Uh, they're rotting and they're decaying. And they don't look like it on the outside. But on the inside, they're rotting and decaying. And they're hurting. They need to be seasoned. Jesus says, we are the salt of the earth. Oh, Father, the Apostle Paul calls people like that imposters in verse 13. Read it. I, he called them imposters. I don't deter away from the gospel. And I, when I speak it the way God gives it to me, he called them imposters. You're set up in the body of Christ, universal. You are an imposter because your salt is no longer salty. So you just want to play the religious game. See, but those kind of things, Pastor David, God has got to expose it because he's not into religiosity. So I got to expose, I love you, but those practices that's not salty, it has got to go. So either you get changed or you get left. <laughs> ah, Lord have mercy. Either you get changed or you get left. Nobody wants to get left, I don't think. 
I hope not. I certainly don't want to. He also tells them, stay away. Hear me, children of the kingdom. He says, stay away from people like that. He didn't say don't love them. Oh, but God called me to love them. He didn't say don't love them. Stay away from them. They are imposters. They used to be salty. They used to be on fire. But something happened to them. And God sees it. If you don't want to end up like that, keep your distance. Let me tell you something, church. There's very few, if any, that I hang out with. And most people I hang out with, I know who I'm hanging out with. Most of the times I'm home. Lady come and tell you from the recliner to the fridge. Sorry, Jerry, you know. I'm trying, man. <laughs> and in between, I'm, of course, I'm doing the will of God, you know, reading and, and preparing myself. Oh, but, you know, I'm very careful. People I hate socially, like Jesus says, not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, is mine. People talk a good game. Oh, yeah, God bless you. How you doing? Yeah, the word says this. And yeah, but your character, if you let God show you through discernment, he'll show you their character. There's no salt on that one. There used to be. Stay away. Stay away. Love them, pray for them, but stay away. I'm coming to the end. I like cliffhangers. Don't you, Elden Easy? It, it leaves them going home. It, it leaves them going home. Well, what's, the, well, what's, the, what's the next thing? Hey, yeah, I got to tell you. He wants me to give you just enough to get you thinking or your position to where you are or so that you don't think you're something when you're really not or you're doing something you're not really doing. Furthermore, Jesus asked the question, can it be made salty again? Now, if you ask that question today, well, everybody got an answer. Oh, yeah, I think it's this. I feel like it's this. I think about God. And it goes on and on and on. And they all be wrong. I'm going to show you why. You never put a question about the, you never add statements to where God has put a period. Never. If he says not be afraid and just believe, and you look at that red letter, it says period, you stop right there and you believe, that's it. Some of us just have to add stuff to it. We just gotta add stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We were talking about the year butts, people. <laughs> ah, there, 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 there are few, there, there's, there's, there's times when God, you look at the scripture, God says, don't be afraid. When he was it Tabitha, he was raising up. The little girl he was raising up was somebody he was raising. It was Tabitha he was raising up. So what happened? The people, read the story. The people go and say, Jesus, get ready to raise her up. The people telling Jesus, why are you going in there? If she's already dead, you know, it's no use, basically. You know what Jesus did? He took John, James, and Peter with him. That's it. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's 12 disciples. Where's the rest? Could they be part of those yeah, but people? But pastor, what is the yeah, but people? Jesus says, I'm going to heal you. Yeah, but I seem to be a little old now. And you're... I am going to pay your rent. Yeah, but the landlord has the letter at the door. I am going to heal your sons. Yeah, but he's been so miserable and doing things. Yeah, but. The yeah, but people. Let me tell you something. Get the yeah, but out of your mouth. When God put a period or something, you just trust. You pray. You trust. And you believe. A word of the Lord comes to you. You've been sick for 20, 15 years. The word of the Lord comes to you. You're going to get healed. Yeah, but Lord, you've been talking to me like forever and nothing ever happened. Yeah, but. God has no use for yeah, but children. He loves us. But he has no use for yeah, but. You want to be... <laughs> you know this... I love the gospel. You notice in the scriptures, 
apparel, the year mud people, he told them, stay outside. <laughs> and you know he loves them, but he said, no, 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 no. What I'm about to do here, I can't handle year butts. I just need certainty that you believe by faith this little girl is going to rise up. Wow, God. I'm going to preach on that. It's totally the year butt people. The church is full of them. Not just LGA. The church universal. We got a year butt for everything. Woo. You know what, Miss? You know what Pastor Cassie calls them? I love it. I'm going to preach on that too. Oh, I listen to everything, man. <laughs> she said, yeah, you know what those people are? Hope killers. They'll kill your hope. You t- Roseanne, you tell them your testimony, and then, yeah, okay, that's all right. I, I gotta, let me tell you what, the doctor said this and that, and that's why that happened. Hope killers. That's why I don't tell everybody my testimony. Especially if God shows you something. You can forget it. Boy, you listen to them, you be like, oh, I didn't hear God. What's wrong with me? And you know that you know that God spoke to you. Hope killers can be in your family also. Not that you don't love them. They're not where you at. So they'll analyze everything God tells you. And if you listen to them long enough, you will no longer believe that God can heal you. I don't listen to hope killers. I don't listen to the yet but people. Nope, 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 no. Nope. At all. God said it. it's going to be done. God says he's going to bring restoration. Is he not doing it? God says he's going to give us the building. Is it not done? God says he's going to add to the church. Has he not done it? God said. See, I want you to understand. Your leaders here, we are not here but people. <laughs> we are God believing the word people. End of story. And if you're going to follow us, as we follow God, you better take the year butt out of your vocabulary. Because I'm telling you here right now, you will not last long in the kingdom. Oh, Father. Give him glory. Hey. Hey. Woo. Thank God Bishop Kaufman was not a year but person. We wouldn't even have this building today. Thank God Bishop Bailey was not a year but person. And guess what? He raised up children that is not a year but people. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, but. Oh, I, I cringe every time I hear that. Harry. Yeah, but this. Yeah, but did God put it? Uh, you know what? I give you a hundred dollars. You find a year butt in here. It, it's not there, right, Elder? You'll never find a year butt in here. Not behind Jesus, anyway. Woo! No year butt. Oh, so I'm gonna have to turn you around and pray for you if I hear a year butt. If God speak a word through me or through the pastor to you, and I hear a year butt, I don't care who they pray. I'm gonna run over there. Year butt, nothing. What did Jesus say? What did his word say? You are healed. So you walk in your healing. Oh, shoot. Woo. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Father. Jesus asked the question. Can it be made salty again? The sons and, sons and daughters of the kingdom. This is a rhetorical question. You're not going to find an answer in the Bible for it. You know what a rhetorical question is? I didn't ask you the question for an answer. I asked you the question for you to think. We just have to have an answer. And there are answers that God will give us. But there's answers he won't give us. He just tell you, believe what I said. End of story. Sons and daughters of the kingdom, this was a rhetorical question. It was never meant to be answered by the disciples. For restoration to a person, a place, 
or a nation. It's God's decision and his alone. It, can it be based off again? That's up to God. That's not up to us. We pray for them. We pray that God will restore them. But you know what the scripture says? The Holy Spirit gave me. He said, for Paul the Apostle states this in Romans 9, 14. What shall then I say? Is God unjust? By no means. Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on who I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on who I will have compassion. You find in Exodus 33, 19. That's God's decision. If he wants to make them salty again. That is not ours to judge or to even touch. We pray that God will reignite their fire. We pray that God will help them remember the things that God has done in their life up to the point that they're in a circumstance or situation. We pray that God will have compassion. But make no mistake about it, by kingdom children. That decision is not ours. It's not yours. It's God's. And God's alone. Thank you, Lord. Last but not least, I believe that God will always have compassion and mercy. I believe because of the love God we serve, but that doesn't mean I make the decision for him. I believe that God will always have compassion and mercy toward his people and even the people that, don't, that are not in relationship with him and those that are called into the relationship with him by way of repentance. And that's too, it's up to the person. It's not up to us. Our job is to pour out the salt, which is the gospel. That's it. Whether they receive it or not when you're evangelizing, and we get caught up in that because I dig evangelism in this house coming up. And I had a group of people, and I, I'm telling you, I, this stuff is still in me where I remember where you're watching and you're praying, and then if the person don't get saved right then and there, you're discouraged. Why are you discouraged? You're not the one that saves. I'm not the one that's saved. I'm the one that's bring the salt. You know one thing about salt? I didn't put it in my notes. You could put salt in a wound, and what would happen? It'll burn. That's what the gospel does to some people. Oh, they're raw, Tony. They're so raw. Mother, ba, 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 ba. I, mean, I had a guy on a retreat years ago like that. He went to sleep cursing and woke up cursing. Oh, I was glad I was still saved. Woo! I remember him like yesterday, man. Forget it, but he left out of there. He was saved. He got saved. But it was the gospel. He was hurting. And each time they speak the gospel, it was going into that wound and it was burning. It was hurting. But you know what? In the end, healing came. His name was Rick. He used to come here. His name was Rick. It was Danny Diaz who paid for him to go on the retreat. And he ended up in my room. Man. Don't tell me I wasn't prepared. Oh, God. I mean, you go to sleep. And, yeah, that son of a bum, bum, bum. That, I go to wake up, the same thing. I, oh, God. And inside I'm praying, but I know where that's coming from. He needs the gospel. And every time I gave him a scripture, it got worse and worse. Salt in the wound. It's a mighty force, salt. You are a mighty force and don't know it. Oh, and don't know it. Last but not least, the scripture says in 2 Peter, the apostle Peter states this in 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness, because we think God is just taking too long. He knows what he's doing. Instead, he is patient. He is patient, not wanting anyone, anyone, anyone. You mean my enemies? That's right. Not even them. Anyone. You mean the person that talk about me all the time? Anyone. You mean the person that stabbed me in the back three years? Anyone. The one that came and robbed my house and stole? Anyone. To perish. But everyone to come to repentance. And that's what Saul does. It preserves, the gospel preserves so that people will have time, deacon, to come to repentance. Not in our time, but in God's appointed time. So I'm going to tell you this, and I'm not telling you nothing else. Children of the kingdom, come out of your salt shakers. There's some decaying meat. Oh, there's some rotting flesh. 
that's around us in this community. And we are, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the preservative. Amen? Amen. Say it. I am the preservative in Jesus' name. Oh, give God glory. Give him glory. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. If there's anyone here that's your visitor, and God has read these, the word of God has resonated with you, the first thing of coming out of soul shake is repentance. Repenting of that, those sins of old, and we all have them. Scripture says we're born in sin. All of mankind, go back to Genesis, and shaped in iniquity. So what's the remedy for sin? Jesus Christ, the gospel. That's what the, that's the resurrection, that is what the crucifixion was about. You think he went up there just to go up there? You think he allowed them to whip him just to allow them to whip? No, humanity at large was in the, in the, in the ballot. It wasn't just about him. And guess what, children of the kingdom? It's not just about us. It's about those folks that's walking up and down Fordham and Creston and Davidson and Morris and wherever you live. They're dying. And you are the salt. But yet you're stuck in your shaker. Whatever that is. And you need to be set free. How can I be set free, Pastor? Well, you come down here and I will meet you at this altar. And I will lead you into in the, in the sinner's prayer. And God himself will do the rest. If that's you, I give you 10 minutes, 10 minutes, just come down here. I'm going to tell you something, don't look at your friends. Because you said heaven is mass. Elder said it. Your friends will not be able to help you. See, because they have to repent of their own sins. No one's good. I hear people say that. I'm a good person. That's a lie. The Bible said we're safe in sin. You may act good until someone crosses you. And the real you will come out. One of the reasons we pray so hard, not to, well, for some of us, not to gain material stuff from God, but to keep, for me, to keep me in check. Because there's a Jeffrey in me that many of you don't know and many of you do. So I keep hold of the Holy Spirit joy to keep that Jeffrey inside. See, when we have a move of God, I was sharing with the pastors, like we do, you don't see me on Monday. Many comments don't see me on Monday when I'm in the room and that personal struggle is battling in me to sin. So I hold on to God and his word for dear life because it's not just about me. It's about my wife. It's about my children. It's about you and you and you and you and you and you. But it starts with repentance like it did for all of us. So I take it everybody saved, born again, according to the word of God. Not according to Jacques Cousteau. According to the word of God. You know, because there's a lot of doctrines out there. They'll tell you, oh, you're not, you don't have to don't take all that. But Jesus was very specific about those that are such children, his children. See, there's two sets of children, my friends, on the planet. Those that God's creation and those that are born again believers in relations with him through Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. Oh, but God knows me. You thug on right. He knows you. And he knows me too. Come, daughter. Come, son. Everything feet of Jesus. Everything in the holy name of Jesus. I'm going to come down. Is anybody else? Those of you on social media. You've been hiding for a long time. 
You want to do the will of God, but there's stuff that's just holding you back. And yet you hear the word of God and there's a fight in you and God is telling you, come, come. If that's you at home right now, I don't care where you are, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, in the living room, you stand up right where you are and you repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I, will, I confess that you are Lord, that you died for my sins. Come into my heart. Accept me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray for them. I thank you, Lord. I can't see beyond the cameras, but Lord God, you can. Are those that received you, oh Father. You will now take them out of the salt shake the way they've been hiding. And like your daughter said, they don't need to know have a three-point sermon. They just need to know what you did for them right now. In that living room, in that bedroom, in that kitchen, in the bathroom, in the basement, right now. And they just have to trust and lean on your Holy Spirit. And you, Father, will do the rest in the name of Jesus. I thank you for them in Jesus' name.
I release you from this place, but never from your from God's presence. Remember what God, through Christ Jesus, spoke today. You are the salt of the earth. And if there's going to be any change, hear me, Jerry. If there's going to be any change, Lisa, in your community, you have got to be the salt that makes the change. I don't care where your communities are. I don't care if it's upstate, middle town, wherever. Wherever you are, you are the salt for God. And that community is only going to get changed if you step out of the shaker. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your people. I release them, oh God. Oh Father, until Sunday, my Lord, until you show up again, oh Father. On Wednesday, of boot camp, Father, as you use your daughter to teach us, oh God, how to remember Scripture, the importance of remembering Scripture. In the name of Jesus. And may your glory manifest from us. Let, let us enable us to continue to be the salt of the earth. In Jesus' name. Everyone say, Amen. amen. Say, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We put everything at the feet of Jesus. Everything in the holy name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive, come alive. For staying tuned in today. Did you enjoy today's message? I pray that you did. And I also pray that your relationship with God is growing by leaps and bounds day by day. Now there's so much more to come, so I want you to be sure to like, follow, and share us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Just type in Love Gospel Assembly. And I'm sure you will be blessed by what you hear and see. And in the meantime, be sure to ring that subscribe bell. You won't want to miss all that's coming up. So have a blessed day.